In today's video, I want to share with you another 10 cheap and cheerful watercolour equipment tips. Hi, I'm Paul Hopkinson, also known as a Devon artist, and I've been painting for over 40 years. Whilst I've built up a lot of watercolour equipment over the years, some of my favourite tools of the trade are just everyday objects. We looked at 10 of these in a previous video, which I'll link to in the description down below. Today, I want to share another 10 really useful things to have within your watercolour kit. Let's get started. Now, one thing I occasionally use is sea sponge. Now, you can use a normal kind of kitchen sponge if you want to, but sea sponge is very good because you find that the structure within the sponge is very, well, uneven, it's very unique. Each one's quite unique. So if I just wet a sponge or just one corner of a sponge, I've got that one already wetted there, get a little bit of paint. I can use this as a means of tapping and creating texture. And if you roll that sea sponge around, as long as you've got plenty of paint in it, of course, then whatever you roll, every different area will be completely different marks that you're going to make with the sea sponge. So it's really useful for that to create individual marks. And this one will be very similar again. But because it's very fine on there, just take some of that water off it first of all, you find the marks are even finer when you're working on these areas. So it's a good way of creating texture on a paper using the sea sponge. But also, I tend to use sea sponge when I'm wetting down a paper sometimes as well. If I want to get a load of water on that sheet of paper very quickly, it's very handy for doing that at the same time. And then when you've got a block pad so it's glued all the way around, so it's completely glued. Remember those old um, kind of books you've seen that have one glued edge? But this is all the way around the bar, one little section at the top. So see where the arrow is on this piece of paper? This is obviously a Bockingford kind of pad of watercolour paper, but you'll find the very similar in the majority of these. And there's a little gap just in there which allows you to slide your palette knife very carefully, put it them down the side of here. Just a little bit, I've gone so far already. Just kind of put down the time for you. There we go, and that's just catching there. And then just down the side, just to here. Try and keep the palette knife nice and flat. Because one thing you don't want to be doing is tilting the palette knife down a hill. Because if you do, you damage your paper underneath and then that just comes to the clearance. And there we go. And that is how to take the paper off a block pad. But as I mentioned, what you want to remember to do when you do do this, don't have the palette knife tilted downwards, because if you do that, if you tilt it downwards, you'll damage that paper underneath. If you tilt it upwards, you could damage the painting itself. So try and keep it nice and flat and just put it in so far. A good way to finish off your painting really is to have a border around the edge of it, isn't it? So if you're going to do a whole colour all over a sheet of watercolour surface, create a border. Now, what I tend to do, I use um, low tap masking tape, it's called washi tape, and I'll pull it all the way around the edge, and you can kind of roughly measure out the gap if you want to, or measure distances. For example, if I want to come in, say for example, I don't know, maybe that deep into the watercolour surface, something like that, I'll then mark, using that mark all the way around, using a piece of card, that's all this is, look, so this is scrap watercolour paper. Mark it all the way around the paper. Okay, I'll just do that in a minute off camera. I'll come back to you in a mo. And then all you need to do is line those marks up very lightly though. You don't have to press too hard all the way around the sheet. So I'll come back to you in a minute when I've got all these lines on. Right, so I've got the lines all the way around the place that I want them to be. And all you need to do then is go around these edges with some little tack masking tape. That's all it simply is all the way around the edge. There's one. Now when you've got all this tape on, give it a rub down, fairly firm actually with your finger. Trying to go onto your watercolour surface though, because we've all got natural oils haven't we on our fingers, we don't want to get any on the watercolour paper. And then using your nail, where it overlaps, just crease it in those little gaps there. Because what will happen if you don't, sometimes anyway, is that when you put a very large wet and wet wash on the paper, you find it might seep underneath those corners. And that's all I would do. When the painting's finished, all you need then to do is just very simply take the tape off, okay? And that's pulling away from the paper, pulling away 
from the painting as you do so, as you can see there, not in towards it. And that is how I would kind of add a border onto a sheet of paper before I start on the painting. Now before you do make a start mixing your colours, I like to just very really lightly like spray it with one of these spray bottles there lot. And that should be enough just to kind of mist it over. So when you get a little bit of colour, let's get some colour out of here, let's go for some green, some sap green. You've already got some water within the palette, kind of help you mix those colours ready for when you make a start on the painting. Now another good technique for kitchen roll is lifting off. So I'll just put some colour on here for you to show you what I mean. Let's have a play with some paint, shall we, today? Bit of green, why not? Let's just do it. Now if it's too wet, you get some kitchen roll like this here, look, in the palm of your hand. I'm going to use just the corner of that kitchen roll. And I can use that just to absorb some of that paint on the paper. See what I mean, look? And that just soaks that up. Now if you're like me and you have your board on a slight angle, and you're working on a complete slope like that all the time, the paint will run down the paper, which is really quite an advantage sometimes when you're working on paintings. This is why I do it. Also, good on your back as well. But it also means that the paint will continue to run down the paper all the time. So using a corner like that and lifting off any runs is a good way of lifting off paint off the paper. But also, it's a good way of creating additional effects within the painting. Well, let me show you the quick tip on thinking about protecting the white of your paper when you're doing your painting. So protect the watercolour paper initially with a piece of paper, but also is to cover that background. Because the problem as you know, I'm sure you realise this and it's probably happened to you, because when you haven't got a background on there, or even when you have got a background already painted on there, you pick up your paint, you take it along to your painting and it drips. And you think, no, no, not again. And if it's a staining colour, I know it's not easy to get off. So to prevent that happening, what you can do, you can print off the image if you've not already done that, Cut out the centre and pop a little bit of printing paper over the top. Cheap and cheerful, that's all it is, but a couple of little tacks of tape and job done. So that's one way of doing it. And the other way is exactly the same method, but this time using a little bit of tracing paper, which is this here lot, that's all it is. So I'll pop into the cheapy shops out there, especially the children's section, a little tip there for you, and see what you can find, just to protect the white of the paper or the background painting that you've already got on there. Now when you're working with a pencil, just a normal graphite pencil compared to something like a mechanical pencil, you find it really useful for shading on the side, obviously, especially if you're kind of drawing out ready for working with a watercolour painting. However, very often, the tip goes really blunt, doesn't it? This has just been sharpened. I've sharpened this by using one of these special pads, and all it is, is uh, sandpaper, that's all it is, look, and you can very lightly go over the sandpaper Turn the pencil at the same time like this lot, and that will enable you to get a nice sharp point to get those very, very fine marks. So a little bit of sandpaper is ideal, or even get a little block of it and staple it down to a piece of wood like that. When your paint is dried within your mixing palette, and you can see it's really dry in there, you can reactivate that, even if it's six months down the line, you can just reuse it. You can do that, it's by using a pipette, and just dab one drop or something like that in each individual section. And that should be enough just to kind of wet it without making it too runny, you know? So that's a good way of just re-wetting your paints that have dried up in your mixing palette. As I said, even six months or even a year down the line. I like to use two different types of palettes. I use a plastic one and a ceramic one. <laughs> there you go. With the plastic one, you find that any colour that you put in there is like a big ball of water, isn't it, within there? But when you look within my ceramic one here, look at the difference in tones. It's the same consistency. We see it's paler on that side and obviously deeper there. And that's because my board is on a slight angle. But it's not obviously gone on there like a big ball of water. So you do find that when you're using a ceramic palette, it's very easy to kind of look at the tonal values within one consistency of one colour or one mix of paint. Look at the difference in that one there, look. See what I mean? So it's well worth buying a ceramic palette compared to a plastic palette for that reason. 
I also have a piece of kitchen roll in my hand as well, where if I've got some colour, I can just lightly tap it on there before I carry on with the painting. So have a piece of kitchen roll in your hand, as well as like a pad of kitchen roll on top of an old, well, an old tea towel actually, just to kind of absorb all the moisture underneath. Do you have any cheap equipment tips and tricks? Please share them in a comment below. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel and click on that thumbs up button if you found this video useful. Remember that American Robin from the palette knife section? Let's look at that next. I'll see you there.